Hello guys, this is Sushant. So welcome to your channel that is Sci Engineers. We have been making videos on different topics of engineering and also on the subjects which are going to be in the first year of engineering. So if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. Please do like the videos and share it with your friends. Regardless of which field you are from or which university you are from, this particular set of videos will be helpful for you in your studies for your first year of engineering. Do let us know in the comment section what more videos we can do for you guys. Also do not forget to hit the bell icon which is just beside the subscribe button to never miss a video which is uploaded. So let's get going. In this video, we are going to discuss about the method which is called as nodal analysis. So before beginning, let us go through one definition which is called as node. Now node is a point at which there are two or more different branches which are being connected to form a joint in a circuit. Like for example, if I consider this particular point wherein you have a resistor, a resistor and a voltage source and another resistor which is coming and meeting at this single point then this point A is called as a node in a circuit. So once you have understood the node definition then let us go for the analysis of this that is a nodal analysis. So let us consider this particular circuit wherein we have different resistors and voltage sources which are connected in such a fashion. Now whenever you are going by the nodal analysis you have to first understand the nodes which are present in this circuit. So if you see that you have this particular node because there are three branches which are getting connected over here. So let us name it as node A. Then again you can see that this particular joint is forming the other node. So that becomes node B. Again you might see that over here also there is a joining of three different branches and in the same fashion over here there is joining of three different branches. Now what you can see is that there is nothing which is connected between these two nodes. So you can assume that that thing as a single node. So in short you have three different nodes which are present in this circuit. Now once you have understood the number of nodes then you have to understand how many equations you will be getting from this circuit. So your number of nodes is 3. So basically you have to find for n minus 1 number of equations. So in this particular case you will be finding 2 equations. Now the reason for getting only 2 equations from a 3 nodal circuit is because the third node which you will be having over here is taken as a reference node. So you have to understand that whenever you are doing a nodal analysis you have to assume one of the node as a reference point. So in this case for our simplicity we will be assuming that this particular node is a reference point or it is grounded basically. So now what we have to consider is we have to consider the voltages at the different nodes. So since this is my reference point over here, it's going to have a zero voltage which will be present at that. Because with respect to my reference, it will be having a zero voltage. At point A, we will be assuming that the node voltage is VA and at point B, we will be assuming it as VB. So you have to understand that in this particular situation, that is in this particular analysis, your node voltages are the variables. So your equations will be consisting of the variables that is VA and VB only. So now after you have decided the nodes and the reference node then what you have to do is you have to go at each and every node and you have to assume some current which is going to be flowing through different branches at that particular node. So let us say that this is my I1 which is flowing away from the node, I2 which is flowing away from the node and I3 which is flowing away from the node. This is just for your understanding that there is some current which is flowing through each branches which is going away from the node. It is just an assumption which we have taken. So if you apply KCL at A, so since KCL states that the sum of the currents which are coming towards it and the sum of the currents which are going away from it is zero. So in this case I will be getting the sum of the currents which are going away that is I1 plus I2 plus I3 
will be equal to the sum of the currents which are coming towards it which in this case is zero because there is no current which is coming towards the node a once you have written the kcl equation then you have to apply your ohm's law at that case so to get your i1 you will be concentrating on this particular branch and on this particular resistor so what you can see is that the current i1 is going from the top to bottom through this resistor so whenever there is a current which is flowing through a resistor you should know that there is going to be a positive and negative potential develop across it so wherever the current is entering that becomes a positive end and where it is leaving that becomes a negative end so now to apply the ohms law it's basically the voltage across the resistance divided by the resistance will give you the current so the voltage across this resistance will be the positive end minus the negative end so it's going to be va since va is connected at the positive end of the resistor and minus the negative end which is connected to the positive or terminal of the battery <coughs> so that's why it's going to be va minus 20 divided by 1 so that is for your i1 going to the next current which is i2 so you can see that through this 1 ohm resistance there is a current which is going downwards that is i2 and i2 since it is going from top to bottom there is a positive and negative terminals which are being <coughs> developed across it so it's going to be va that is a positive terminal minus it is connect the negative is connected to the reference node so it's going to be va minus 0 divided by 1 in the similar fashion you can have for i3 i3 it's going from this left side to the right side so it's going to have a positive end over here negative over here so it's going to be plus va minus vb divided by 0.5 this thing will be equal to 0 so from this you will be getting your equation in va and vb so when you solve this particular equation you will be getting this equation so you will name it as equation 1 so this particular analysis was done for my node a then going on to the next node which is my node b so you'll assume some currents which are flowing away from the node let us say that this current is i4 this is i5 and this is i6 so again you will be having the kcl at b which is going to be i4 plus i5 plus i6 is 0 so your i4 i4 is a current which is flowing in this particular resistance you can see that since the current is going in the opposite direction so now the polarity will be changing from this end to be positive to this tend to be negative so it's going to be positive minus negative so it's going to be vb minus va divided by the resistance which is 0.5 plus your i5 is going from the positive end to negative end so it's vb minus 0 plus your i6 is flowing through this particular resistance so it's entering from here and leaving from here so it's going to be vb minus 20 divided by the resistance this thing is equal to 0 so on solving this particular equation you will be getting this equation so let us name it as 2 solving 1 and 2 you will be getting your values of va and vb which are basically the node voltages so you will be getting your va and vb as 11 and 12 volts so depending on whatever is asked in that particular question you will be finding those parameters in that particular circuit so that's all for your nodal analysis you should remember one thing that the mesh analysis and nodal analysis can be interchanged with each other so depending on ease of different circuits you will be able to apply different methods like if there are less number of meshes which are present in a circuit then you should go by the mesh analysis 
or if there are less number of nodes which are present in a circuit then you can go by the nodal analysis also nodal analysis helps us in the analysis when there are lots of current sources present but mostly in a question they will be mentioning what method you have to follow so depending on the question itself you will be following that particular analysis there are many more analysis to be done in dc circuits so we will be uploading those videos as and when it is done so signing off this is sushant from samartha vidya classes which is for engineering and science students we conduct classes for be btech and diploma level students and also we conduct classes for the engineering entrances if you have any enquiry regarding us then you can visit our facebook page which is samartha vidya or you can email us at samarthavidya@gmail.com the link for the facebook page and the address is given in the description below so people who are new to the channel do subscribe to the channel and keep liking our videos and sharing the videos also let us know how you feel about the videos in the comment section and what more videos we can do for you guys so keep watching keep learning and happy learning bye